Number 18, morning dance, is our first opportunity to move in something in a direction called skips. So far, we've been moving steps, meaning that we take a finger and we move one note down or up, and we're only adding or removing one finger. But in this case, if you notice, that F sharp to D, that's two notes. There's an E that lives between those notes. So when we take those fingers off, we are skipping notes. More importantly also, we're going from our open D to a G. Uh, for basses, that's your open string, so this isn't the same kind of concept for you, but for violins, violas, shells, and basses, you're gonna have this opportunity to go from an open D to an open G. And I wanna talk about the way we do that. It's very common for young players to add a finger and build towards that note. When you put G down, you're putting first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger. Uh, this can be this can cause a bad habit when we're trying to go between those notes because you might hear you might hear that little change if we don't start working. So we're going to learn something called block fingering. Block fingering is when you lift all of your fingers up and put all of your fingers down. So if you're putting a G string, if you're playing a G, let's say you're a cello playing a G, you would lift all four fingers up and put all four fingers down. If you're a violin or violist, you would lift all three fingers up and put all three fingers down in one unit rather than one at a time. Okay, so before we even start this, I wanted to practice that concept together. I want everybody to find their G, and I want you to play G, G, D, D, G, G, and I want you just to lift your fingers off and put them down all together. So pause the video and do that for a few seconds. Okay, you're back. Now what you're going to do is you're gonna go from that F sharp and do the same thing. I want you to practice going F sharp, D, G, working on lifting all three fingers at the same time. And when you put uh, or all of your F sharp fingers at the same time, and when you go to put all your fingers down for G, you're doing that all at the same time. If you're a violin or viola, you're putting all three fingers down. If you're a cello, you're putting all four fingers down. And basses, working on lifting your all of your hand up for that F sharp. So now I want you to practice F, G, or D, G, and work on lifting everything together at the same time. So pause your video for a second and do that. Okay, we are back. Now let's go ahead and walk through morning dance. So the first time through, we're gonna sing it with our note names, really making sure that we are um, uh, singing uh, through the rests and making sure we're keeping track of all the rests. And there is a repeat at the end. So don't, uh, don't let that surprise you. There are no rests in between them. We only have that one rest at the very end. So let's really make sure we're counting our notes, singing through and going there. So we're gonna sing first. Feel free to left hand your way through so that you can practice that if you'd like as well. And here we go, morning dance singing. One, two, Ready, go. G, G, F, D, G, G, sharp, D, E, E, sharp, sharp, G, 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 repeat. So that one, the, the recording only had uh, the second time through. So we're gonna play and sing this time with the repeat. That was an issue with the recording. So here we go, playing and singing with the repeat. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. G, G sharp, D, G, G sharp, D, E, E sharp, sharp, G, 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 repeat. G, G sharp, D, G, G sharp, D, E, E sharp, sharp, G, G, Okay, we're gonna play through, only play along with the accompaniment. Remember that block fingering, remember uh, only putting down all of the fingers at the same time. Don't put them down one at a time because what you'll get is a is kind of a little glissando into that note. You'll get a bunch of ba-dum versus bum, bum, bum. So really make sure you're block fingering, putting all of those fingers down at the same time. If it's two fingers, it's both fingers at the same time. It's three fingers, it's three fingers at the same time, okay? Here we go, just playing it. One, two, ready, go.
right, number 19 is Rolling Along. And this one is pretty, it's not too bad musically. Uh, you know, it's just walking. It's all stepwise motion as you go through it. Uh, the name of this one though is gonna be Endurance. So this is a pretty long song. It's like twice as long as anything you've played in one shot up to this point. You'll notice at the very end, it says go to the next line. So just like reading a, a book or any of other print, uh, you know, the English language, you go left to right. When you get to one line, you go back down to the next line um, and kind of go from there. So um, this is just one shot through. So I want you guys to sit up nice and tall, both feet flat on the floor, focus on instrument position and posture, really, really think through your notes, think through your notes and focus on not lifting your fingers up too far so that you don't have too far to move to put them back down. So here is rolling along, really kind of get ready to focus your mind throughout the whole thing. There's no repeat, so it's just a matter of focusing your way through the whole thing. I would notice that if you look at the first two measures of the first line and the first two measures of the second line, they're exactly the same. So that's a help that that pattern is there. Uh, remember back from our open strings that we wanna start finding ways to remember those patterns. So when you're practicing this on your own, you know, maybe you just practice the first two measures and then you go practice the first two measures of the same line and you've got half the, or the second line and you've got half the piece uh, learned already. So those are just some ways to kind of really focus on making sure that you are practicing more efficiently by recognizing when you see repeated patterns. So we're gonna go ahead and sing through this first, then we're gonna play and sing it, and then we're gonna play it. So here is Rolling Along Singing. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. F, E, D, E, sharp, sharp, sharp. E, 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 sharp, sharp, sharp. Sharp, E, D, E, sharp, 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 sharp. E, E, sharp, E, D. All right, so yeah, remember that that's an F sharp. Sorry, I keep singing F every now and then. I really want us to make sure that we know that that note is a sharp because um, you know that's F sharp. The other ones are E natural, D natural, but that one's an F sharp. So sing the sharp so that you are making the difference. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and play and sing that note together. Play and sing that song together. So here we go, playing and singing. One, two, ready, go. E, D, E, sharp, sharp, sharp. E, 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 sharp, 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 rest. Sharp, E, D, E, sharp, 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 sharp. E, E, sharp, E, D. All right, so now we're gonna play it all together. Double check that your posture and position is sitting up nice and tall. Make sure that you've got a good instrument position posture. You should also feel everything relaxed. You never wanna feel like everything's raised up and super uncomfortable. Everything should be relaxed, good instrument position and posture. So here we go, sit up nice and tall. Both feet flat on the floor, good instrument position and posture, standing our fingers up nice and tall. Nice straight wrists for everybody, nice curved fingers. Make sure you have your C-shaped cellos and basses. Basses, make sure you have your K-shape. And here we go, just playing, rolling along. Sit up nice and tall. One, two, ready, go. All right, number 20 is Good King Wenceslas. And for basses, we learn a new note. So if you look at that last note in the first measure, it's A, A lives on the fifth line for basses. This is the same A that the cellos have been reading for their open strings. But for basses, this note is a little different. So bass, it's first finger on the G string. That's your A, so when you play that first measure, G, 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 A. So you're gonna play first finger on the G string. 
So that is your high A. The rest of this is just um, really stepwise motion except for that jump from G to D. So really make sure you are um, utilizing that block fingering, bringing your, all your fingers off and back on when you do that. And there's an opportunity to bracket, uh, for a bracket to hold your, to tunnel your fingers over that G and A. So you don't have to lift your fingers and bring them back, especially at the beginning, you know, we're not really sure of accuracy at, at this point yet. So it's really good to keep your fingers down once you got it so you have less chance of playing the note out of tune when you put it back. Other than that, this is a pretty straightforward tune. There is a rest, um, there's some rests in the last measure that you wanna really make sure you're counting. One, rest, three, rest, and then a repeat. Don't let that repeat surprise you. So let's go ahead and uh, sing through it first, and then we will sing it and play it, and then we will just play it. So here is just singing it first. One, two, ready, go. G, 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 A, G, G, D, rest. E, D, E sharp, G, rest. G, repeat. G, 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 A, G, G, D, rest. E, D, E sharp, G, rest. G, rest. All right. Let's go ahead and play it and sing it at the same time. So we're going to play it and sing the names of the notes. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. D, E sharp, G, rest. G, repeat, G, 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 A. Sorry, I didn't sing at the beginning. I got was just too caught up in the this beautiful song. So now we're gonna go ahead and sing the whole thing. Not sing, play the whole thing. Only play the whole thing. No singing the note names. Follow that repeat. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Okay, number 21, seminal chant. You're back to looking at some of these skips where we are going to need to skip between three and one, that G and E. So again, double check and make sure that you're using that block fingering. Make sure you're lifting all the fingers and putting all the fingers down at the same time. We're not trying to do it one after another. So that's some things to think about. And what's nice about this piece is there's a rest in between putting your first finger down and putting your third finger down if you're violin or viola, and then first finger and fourth finger if you're a cellist. So just keep in mind that you're, you wanna make sure you're moving those all those fingers at once rather than, you know, putting them down in turn. Uh, the rest of this is, it's just a, just make sure you're paying attention to that pattern. It's that same old pattern that we remember back from open D, you know, that kind of pattern. So that rhythmic pattern isn't too bad, uh, but we just wanna make sure we're focusing on those skips, okay? Uh, probably by this point, to be honest with you, you may be tired, your the tips of your fingers may be a little sore, the tip of your pizzicato finger may be a little sore, and I just wanna remind you that that's okay. A little bit sore in the fingertips is totally normal. Your fingers and your skin is building calluses, so just uh, allow that to happen over time. It will get better, I promise you. The, the skin, it's just like the bottoms of your feet. You know, the skin will get a little bit tougher and it'll feel a little better, and you won't even notice it after a while. But there is a little bit of time, maybe a couple weeks, that your fingers will 
it'll get a little soft. Uh, regular, consistent practicing is the fastest way to get over this. You don't wanna practice for two hours and get a blister, but if you practice one day and then don't practice for another four days and then practice again, your fingertips will hurt all the time. Your body has that opportunity to heal so um, and kind of re-soften that skin. So consistent, maybe like every 15 minutes a day or maybe 15, 20 minutes every other day, that's what's gonna help you keep those calluses and you, it'll stop hurting faster that way. So we're gonna look at seminal chant. Remember, we have those skips, remember block fingering. And as always, good instrument position and posture is necessary. So here we go. Sing it first, and then we're going to play it and sing it, and then we are going to sing it. So here we go, singing it first. One, two, ready, go. G, G, E, rest. G, G, E, rest. G sharp, E, D, E, 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 repeat. G, G, E, rest. G, G, E, rest. G sharp, E, D, E, 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 rest. So there is seminal chant. Let's go ahead and play it and sing it. Remember sitting up nice and tall. Remember that block fingering. Here we go, play it and sing it. One. Two, ready, go. Rest, G, G, E, rest. G sharp, E, D, E, 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 repeat. G, G, E, rest. G, G, E, rest. G sharp, E, D, E, 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 rest. And now we are going to play it. Play it without singing it. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Okay, number 22, Essential Elements Quiz, Lightly Row, has some really interesting advanced technique that you guys are totally ready for. Now, this advanced technique is called tunneling. And what that means is, is that I would play a note on a lower string. And as long as, let's say I was a cello player, I have that curved fingers, a bass player curved fingers, and if I'm a violinist and a violist, I have my curved fingers. As long as I'm playing on the tips of my fingers and I'm curving my fingers, I can create a tunnel that my higher string uh, can go through that lets the string vibrate without playing, without any impeding of my finger. If my posture, if my hand shape is not correct, let's say I have a flatter hand shape. Let's say I'm playing like this, where my fingers are crossed and I'm flat. I am not able to create that tunnel to let that higher string ring. So even though I can play F sharp like this, I'm not getting letting that open A string ring. So we're gonna practice first this idea of tunneling. So I want everybody to find an F sharp. I want you to find an F sharp on your D string. You're gonna put F sharp down, cellos are three fingers, violins and violas are two fingers. I want you to make sure that your fingers are standing up nice and tall. And what you wanna do is play F sharp, and then I want you to play A at the same time with your fingers down. And just play back and forth between F sharp and A without lifting your third or your F sharp fingers off the string. If you're noticing this sound when you get to the A, it's because your A string is being touched by your other fingers and it can't ring freely. So make sure you have that nice tunnel. So I want you to pause the video right now and I want you to practice that concept. F sharp to A, F sharp to open A. Basses, you guys are going to need to do um, you know, F sharp to uh, your first finger A, maybe putting both those down at the same time and trying that. Uh, this, this concept, just the F sharp to A doesn't work. You guys can practice F sharp to G because your G is your higher string. So I want you to pause this, this right now and practice holding F sharp down and playing A at the same time. Ready, go, pause it. Okay, 
you've come back. So now we've got this concept practice, at least it's familiar under our hand, and now we're gonna learn how to apply this to the music. If you guys look at measures three, four, and five, you'll notice that there's a bracket that goes under all those notes starting at F sharp, going to uh, the F sharp in measure five, and that bracket is indicating that you should leave your hands, your fingers down through all those notes. So you're not going to lift your fingers up while you play that open A string. You're going to use that tunnel to do this. Right now, it's just an exercise to get used to the feeling, but eventually you're going to come across music where you're really going to need to do this tunnel so that you can play these notes fast enough to go through. So the sooner we start preparing some of these really good habits and techniques, the better off you're going to be. Okay, so um, maybe what you want to do is take a second and practice just going G or F, G, A, 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 and practice those last couple measures. So if you want to pause there and practice those last couple measures just to get that under your hand, that would be beneficial. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we're back. Let's go ahead and sing the note names, and then we're going to play and sing, and then we're going to play. It's a straight shot through, so just there's no repeat. Just watch the rhythm and go through it. So here we go. We're going to sing. Oh, I should say this. The last two measure, the skips, D, F sharp, A, A, D. This might be a section that you might need to practice just to get the feeling of that. Those skips can be a little tricky sometimes. Here we go, we're gonna go ahead and sing it first. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. A sharp, sharp, rest. G, E, E, rest. D, E sharp, G, A, 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 rest. A sharp, sharp, G, E, E, rest. Sharp A A D. All right, let's go ahead and play it and sing it. Here we go. Instruments up. One, two, ready, go. A sharp sharp. G E E rest. D E sharp G A. We're going to go ahead and play through this at any point during this exercise. If you need to pause, redo it, pause, maybe practice a section after playing through it and singing it. You realize, oh, I need to practice that again. Feel free to pause, replay, do as much as you can. So here we go. Lightly row with no singing. One, two, ready, go. Ready, go. 